All right, so today is the day of the big race, the 4400 Unlimited class. All the drivers are lined up to take off. I'm gonna drive around and go to Turkey Claw, see if I can see any of the action. Once all the drivers leave the start line, Turkey Claw is the first rock crawling trail that you come up to. This place can become a major pinch point if anybody has any trouble. Up on Turkey Claw, unfortunately, all the stuff down there in that traffic jam. Such a mess. At this point, you have one car broken down on the right line, and everybody's trying to get around this car. Drivers start getting anxious. This results in another person tipping over on the left line. Now there's only one line open and drivers have to get through the middle line. Imagine being upside down trying to winch yourself back over as these thousand horsepower cars are driving inches from you. That could be a pretty stressful situation. As the traffic jam clears up, drivers are able to head out into the desert for lap one of the race. All right, so I'm gonna make the long journey out to remote pit two. Once I make my way out to remote pit two, Lauren Healy was one of the race leaders at this time. Once we get out there, we see that he's in the pits and everybody's looking at the back of his car. I know that this is a serious breakdown because he's outside of the car. Usually at the pits, a driver doesn't get out unless something serious is going on. Corey arrives with some more parts while Lauren talks to the media. These situations always have to be stressful as he's still very much in the race at this point. Since King's Veto is just right near Remote Pit 2, we decided to run up there and check out some of the action. So it's pretty cool to get to see the cars run through some of these rocks. A lot of times we don't always get to see a lot of the action, so it's really cool to get up there. So we got some really good shots. Check this out. Now last year, they went up King's Veto. This year, they're going down King's Veto. So Cody Addington makes his way down through King's Veto with JP Gomez right on his tail. Now JP Gomez also had a mishap in qualifying, so he was having to start in the back of the pack today. And now he's already worked his way up to mid-pack. Dan Fresh makes his way down through King's Veto in a borrowed race car. From what I understand, he borrowed this car from Cody Wagner. Now Dan is a really experienced desert driver. A few years ago, we got the pre-run with him down before the Baja 1000, and it was awesome to get to run around the backcountry with him, as he knows the area really well.
Lauren Healy was able to get his car fixed and now here he is back in the race. Driver John Webb making his way through King Speedo. You can see the speakers up on the top of his car as that's what most people know him by, the guy who's driving around listening to music. Now they had a, a fire on this car inside their trailer before the race, so they had a ton of work to do to get this car race ready, and they're having a great race today. Now here's one of the UTVs that are racing in the 4400 class. This is Hunter Miller, and he gets high centered on a rock. It looks like at first he doesn't have his locker engaged, but once he does engage a locker, it looks like they're too stuck to get off this rock. As the co-driver exits a vehicle to get the winch out, they've got trouble coming. This has always been one of the debates of having UTVs in a class with cars that weigh two to three times as much as they do. You can see here a thousand horsepower, 6,000 pound plus car trying to get around one of these UTVs. If Paul kept pushing forward, he could have easily crunched the back end of that car. Paul decides to back up and take another way around. With the rear steer on this car, he can really work through the rocks. Watch it operate. This car is still so new, and they're still getting everything worked out of it, but you can see how smooth that this thing moves through the rocks. You can see here how difficult these situations get. Now we've got a second car stuck on this UTV and a third car trying to get by. Now this is a tough situation because everybody's still trying to be in a race, so people have to get creative with the lines that they choose. You can also see here that both co-drivers of the other cars are working together to get out of this situation. They're able to finally get the UTV free just as more cars start entering the trail. This is one of the more challenging things that's hard to say. Working with all that gear on, with the neck brace and the helmet and the fire suit and the safety nets, all that stuff makes it that much more challenging to try to move around. Because with those neck braces that you have on, you really can't move your head very much at all. I do give these guys a ton of credit for running this race in UTVs where they're pretty much outgunned in every number from horsepower to weight to tire size. It's really impressive what they've been able to do. Levi Shirley makes his way into King's Veto. Levi's been having a great day as well. His car looks like it's working really good. Von Gittin Jr. is making his way down King's Veto, and I'm surprised to see him back on course as earlier in the day he was one of the cars that were broken down on Turkey Claw. 
I'm not sure what was broke or how they got it fixed, but it was pretty impressive to see that he's back in this race as well. Now King's Veto is located really close to Remote Pit 2, which is nice because so many years in Remote Pit 2 we didn't get to see any of the action. From Remote Pit 2 it's a pretty short walk up into the hills to get to see some of the action out on the rock courses. Another interesting aspect of getting to watch people on the rocks is to see who really can drive their cars well. It's very interesting to see people in the different lines that they pick and also you can tell who's really comfortable in their car. Now racing through the rocks like this sure looks like a lot of fun. However, as the day goes on you get more fatigue and one minor mistake can cause a massive issue. You could tip over, you could break something. It's got to be a huge challenge to stay focused through this entire race. Imagine the toll that this takes on all these cars and all this equipment. Just bashing through the rocks hour after hour. It's a huge challenge and it's a huge challenge to not break anything. <laughs> 